We're joined to talk about it by Rick Jordan, the founder and CEO of Reach Out Technology, a firm that specializes in cybersecurity. Rick, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me on. Let's what do you know about this. Cozy Bear? Is this different than Ravel? It's starting to get difficult to follow these underground groups, Rick. Who did it? The names are definitely more like band names than they are hacker names, right? Yeah, that's for and sure. What we're <laughs> what we're seeing is the thing that's really alarming is Cozy Bear first attacked Solar Winds towards the end of last year, 2020, and that was one of the big hacks that then infiltrated the U.S. government because Solar Winds was the software that managed a lot of those systems. Kaseya, the hack that we saw over the weekend, was a similar piece of software, actually one that even my firm uses to where that's used to manage end clients' networks and employ security policies. So both of these are considered what we call supply chain attacks. Mm -hmm. So if you think of the top of the pyramid, you've got Kaseya and solar winds up at the top, then they affect everything below those when they're infected. So when you look at these names, the thing that's alarming is that these tactics are very similar from a strategy perspective. Cozy Bear is definitively linked to Russian nation states. Revel, not, it's just kind of assumed right now that they are. It's possible. But the, the methods are so similar, and that's what's concerning. So what does that say about our ability to stop them if they keep breaking in using the same method? Yeah, we need a, a dedicated and definitive response from the administration, from the Biden administration for this, not something that soft pedals at this point. And I realize that's opinion because I feel that we're going to continue to see these things happen because these types of methods used to be only reserved for nation states, these sophisticated methods. But now you're seeing e-criminal groups like Revel. They are definitively just an e-criminal group from what we can tell right now using those same tactics. So it's almost like the amateurs are now becoming on the same level as the professionals. Wow. So the best thing to do, and this is the state of my industry, which is very fragmented right now, is there's 142,000 MSPs that are across the United States. And there's not many that actually really understand what's going on and even employ the same security tactics for themselves that they do for their clients. That's why the Kaseya hack was so big. You're making me a little more scared than I was already here, Rick. The, the president just had, well, you heard the, the remarks, nothing terribly specific. Does the White House, based on what you understand, have the ability to learn enough to respond? I believe so. And CISA, you know, as long as the agencies, our intelligence agencies work in concert, you know, even when I was in the White House last year, speaking with those agencies in concert, it was very interesting to see that each one had just the, the genuine goal to move our country forward and protect our borders from even just a cybersecurity perspective. And that's what we need to see now. But we need a coordinated effort and direction directly from the top from POTUS on this in order to keep these moving in the right direction. So, yes, they do. But we need more definitive action. You probably heard the president speak about this of uh, your line of work uh, when he was overseas uh, for the G7. And he said, you know, talked about our ability to respond and, and respond with force. Do you have a sense of what that is? I know we have played with this. Uh, you could ask Iran, I suspect, about our ability uh, to interfere with their nuclear program. But if we were going to go up against Russia, what are we talking about here? Turn the lights out, and cut off the Internet for everybody? What are we capable of doing that would really make an impact? This is a that's a great question, Joe. This area is so new right now because you figure the scare years ago, decades ago, was nuclear warfare, right? This is that new sort of World War Three, in my opinion, is cyber warfare because there's no human lives directly lost. You know, so for a response, there's a lot that's available. And keep in mind that the la the previous administration, they were the ones that actually established the offensive division of our cybersecurity division within our intelligence agencies just a few years ago. So we're ramping up quickly, but this is something that I feel that we need to just, again, have a clear directive from the White House to the Russian government to say, this is not tolerated anymore. There's no list of do's and don'ts. It's just nothing is tolerated. That's the stance we need to take, and then we can prove it from there on. Seems like it might be a good time to show the world what we are capable of, right? I mean, I don't, I don't mean to be some new age internet hawk or whatever the heck that would be, but my gosh, we've been talking around this a long time, Rick. For sure. And, uh, you know, from my perspective, you know, from a cybersecurity perspective and, and serving small and medium enterprises, you know, that do about $100 million in revenue or below, I see this affect lives and put people on the sidelines, make them homeless because they lose so much money because their business is taken out for that long. Wow. So even with the Kaseya hack only affecting, you know, quote unquote, 1,500 businesses, those are small mom and pop shops. 
This is their livelihood. That's what our president is in place to protect, that part of the American dream, and that's where he needs to step up. We're talking on Bloomberg Sound On with Rick Jordan, the founder CEO of Reach Out Technology, following the latest hack in what appears to be a pretty broad ransomware attack. This is all happening on the same day here, Rick, that we got word from the Pentagon canceling this uh, rather controversial deal known as Jedi, right? This was something that was uh, awarded to Microsoft some time ago, the Joint Warfighting Cloud Capability Contract, the Joint Enterprise Defense Infrastructure, Jedi. It sounds cool. Now it looks like Microsoft and Amazon are going to share this. This is cloud capability. This is cloud security for probably the most important client in the country, right? That's the Pentagon. Do these companies have the ability to secure the Defense Department? Microsoft and Amazon, I do believe, have that ability. I'm fully, <laughs> I'm fully behind their capabilities to be able to do something like that. One, because they are giants and they have the funding to do that. That's probably the biggest difference between the clients that my firm serve and the big boys, big tech like Microsoft and Amazon, is they have the money to throw at it. Okay. You know, I think while it's a, it's a good move, and this is speaking strictly from a strategy perspective, I think it's a good move to split the contract between Microsoft and Amazon. That way there's redundancies in place. So if one is compromised, the other one can still carry out the mission. How about so I'm that? sure you're tracking with me on that. Yeah, but the, the problem is that it almost seems like it's undermining now because it's several years later at this point from when this whole plan came about, and we're already that far behind. So if we're going to split it, which we are, the pace needs to accelerate to get this accomplished. And there's nothing more worth proving that than the past couple of days with these recent attacks. Yeah. The Pentagon said it decided to cancel the contract, quote, due to evolving requirements, increased cloud conservancy, and industry advances. It sure makes me wonder what they know, Rick. <laughs> yeah. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of fancy tech talk, right? <laughs> and with those, they're pretty much saying that at this point, I would, my opinion, again, would be just for redundancy purposes, that's a good move. But still, the pace needs to be stepped up in order to combat these things head on. Well, so is the quest for cybersecurity, in the end, uh, going to ensure that only major companies can survive in this market? That's, uh, I hope not, for real. Because in my industry, the managed service providers, we're the ones that service those small and medium enterprises of that $100 million or less, you know, the mom and pop shops, the places where most Americans work. You know, those things, a lot of managed service providers don't necessarily have the competencies to do that, but that's why I'm doing what I'm doing in order to try to bridge that gap. And as we see time go on within the next couple of months to the soonest the year, the next couple of years, I hope so, that we can make that technology available to every single American business. Well, just lastly, Rick, whether it's a, you know, a massive uh, company or not, how are you keeping up with this? If the threat is continuing to change, you know the old line with terrorism, they only need to be right once, you need to be right all the time. Yeah, the, the, the brutal truth, and I'm just going to give this to you, there is not anything as a 100% secure network. That's something that we always tell our clients. It's something when I speak on stages across the U.S. that I tell other managed service providers is don't ever guarantee that. The biggest part that you need to worry about is the response plan. So when Kaseya got hacked this weekend, the response plan was amazing. I was super impressed by it on the way that they contained the hack, you know, because you have to run under the assumption now, even with the RNC, with this latest hack, right, with Cozy Bear, they should have been running on the, under the assumption that at some point they will be hacked. So what's our response plan going to be to get us back up and running as quickly as possible? It's not as so much about the prevention only anymore. It's about how we respond after the inevitable breach happens. The inevitable breach, the words of a founder and CEO of a cyber technology company, cybersecurity. That would be Reach Out Technology, and he would be Rick Jordan. Rick, many thanks for the time today on Bloomberg Radio. Thank you. Learned a lot, actually. We needed that.